Hey, Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.4, number 17. And here's where we were asked to express each geometric sum using summation notation. So when I see this sum here, and I say sum because we're adding some stuff, all right, and, and, it, and I do know it's geometric, but it's asking me to write it in summation notation. So with that capital E looking thing, which is really sigma um, in the Greek alphabet, but one of the important pieces of information they gave us was that this was a geometric series. All right, so if it's geometric, we've said that whether it's a sequence or a series, it's really good to know a sub one, and it's great to know r also. And if I wanna find a sub one, I can just see it right there, it's eight. And if I wanna find r, I'll change my highlighter color here, I can take any term and divide it by the previous term. So I'll go with four in ratio to eight, and then that ratio is gonna be one half. So at this point, for my for my summation notation, or for my sigma notation here, I, I can start this, you can use any letter, I'll just, I'll pick one for right now. I don't know what I'm gonna to go to, but I do know a sub one is eight, and I know my ratio is one half, and I'm gonna raise this to the i minus one power. And the reason I'm gonna opt for i minus one is because if I plug in i equaling one, that will make this exponent zero, and then when I have one half raised to the zero, that will be one. Eight times one will be eight, and that will get me back to my original eight. All right, so the I'm gonna erase all my little green highlights. The, the thing that I need to figure out here is how many terms do I have? Which term is this? Is it the set sixth term? Whoops, let me write which term is this without going to my next so which term is this, right? I, I don't know what my end game is, right? Was this, uh, is this a sub eight? Is this a sub nine? I, I, I don't know what term it is. And that's what I've got to figure out. I'm going to erase that just because I don't know what term it is. I don't want you to think when you look at this that it's definitely a sub eight. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Since my ratio isn't too bad, I could actually make the series or I, I could play the series out. So we have eight plus four plus two. I know that the next term would be half of that, so that would be one, and then it would be one half, and then it would be one fourth, and then it would be one eighth. And if you know 0.125 as a fraction, this is one eighth. So now if I count this, this was the first term, second term, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So this is a sub seven, which means that over here, I'm gonna drop a seven. And, and that would actually be my answer. So I could say that the answer to this is the sum from one to seven of eight times one half to the i minus one. Right, but I, I, I wanna go a little bit further rather than just playing it out like we counted here and figuring out it was a sub seven because what if this, this decimal, what if this was something uglier that we couldn't discern. So how could we figure out which term in the sequence it is? Well, that's when we go to our handy dandy sequence formula. All right, and then I'm going to plug in 0.125. And then I'm going to use that formula and solve for n. So once we once we get here, we have an exponential equation, right? You see that your variable is in the exponent. And so when you have an exponential equation like this, the thing that you wanna do is isolate the exponential term. This is all of that stuff we did in chapter six. It's playing itself out with geometric sequences and series. So if I wanna isolate the exponential term, I'm gonna first divide both sides by eight. So that's what you see me doing here. And then I'm actually, I crunched this number on my calculator, 0.125 divided by eight is one over 64. And then once I've isolated my exponential term, I'm gonna log both sides. And you can opt to common log or natural log. I'm just gonna go with natural log. And once I do that, I can, using the power rule from logs, bring that term down, right? And this ln of one half here, it might look funky, but it's just a constant. So I'm gonna divide, and let me just erase this because it's getting a little crowded. I'm gonna divide, and I'll change colors too, divide both sides by ln of one half. Right, this will cancel here, leaving me with an n minus one. And then I have this ugly looking fraction here, but if I crunch it on my calculator, I find out that it's just the number six. When I add one to the other side, sure enough, I am getting n equaling seven. And we had counted that this was the seventh term way up here. It's just that here is the algebraic way to do it. So I find that it's the seventh term, 
and then I can write my series here. Oh, and just taking note, I see that I use the letter K here, where up top, I'll just scroll up, I happen to use the letter I here. It doesn't matter what letter you use, it's the same idea. I mean, for all intents and purposes, we could have used N over here. I mean, go nuts, pick your own letter and see what you like. But at any rate, there is number 17. All right, thanks so much, bye.